from around the globe. It's the Cube with coverage of SUSECON Digital. Brought to you by SUSE. Welcome back. This is theCUBE's coverage of SUSECON Digital 20. I'm Stu Miniman and really happy to welcome to the program. We have one of the keynote speakers, Alexander Kocher. He is president and managing director of Electrobit. Really excited to dig in, talk about autonomous vehicles. Alex, uh, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Stu. And I'm really excited that you pronounced my family name uh, correct because this is quite difficult for you. It's a German name. Thank you very much. <laughs> Well, luckily on theCUBE, uh, you know, we, we, we do have lots of global people we have on the program. I try to do my best. Uh, my, my, my German, perfect, perfect uh, ich kein Deutsch is all I can say, really. Um, but yeah, I the know CH is to, very, uh, very, very difficult to pronounce. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so Alex, uh, obviously autonomous vehicles is one of those use cases that we talk a lot about, everything from edge computing to AI, um, you know, software eating the world, uh, really one of those transformative technologies. Uh, why don't we start with first, you know, Electrobit. Give us a little bit as to, you know, where Electrobit fits in kind of the, the, the global uh, auto landscape. Yeah, thank you, Stu. So Electrobit, um, Electrobit was founded in the late 80s, 1988. And since then we are really doing embedded, we are a pioneer in the embedded software and uh, providing solutions, software technologies uh, for the automotive industry. Uh, since then, we are powering uh, more than 1 billion devices in much more than 100 million vehicles worldwide. And uh, we are serving the automotive industry since then. So software is really uh, becoming the single biggest enabler of innovation in the car. And software creation is our passion. So we enjoy solving challenging problems and providing solutions that drives the mobility ecosystem of the future uh, vehicle, where mobility causes zero fatalities, produces low emissions, and is perceived as quality time. This is also our mission, and with that, we are providing uh, services, software technologies, and tools for the automotive industry. Yeah, it has been fascinating to watch software in the automotive world. Uh, you know, I'm old enough to remember that when you used to take a car in, the first thing they did was put it up and look under the hood and everything. And now pretty much uh, they plug a cable into the computer and you know go to the diagnostic screens before they do anything else. Um, when we talk about autonomous vehicles, uh, you know, I think many people would be familiar, there's really that five stage model of going from helping to fully autonomous. Uh, give us a little bit as to what you're seeing in the trends out there and uh, you know how this market has been maturing. Yeah, I think um, um, the trend in the autom uh, autonomous vehicle, we are at the moment at level two, level two plus. So where you're still uh, assisting the driver's behavior with various functions. Um, we are starting to be to go towards uh, level three hands off um, uh, in the next um, couple of, yeah, hopefully just months or uh, uh, single years. And then going from the, from there to a fully autonomous uh, vehicle, where you also not only have hands off but also eyes off, uh, and then hand over the complete uh, um, control to the car. But since then, uh, it, it will still be a path. We just had uh, recently the announcement of um, uh, Audi that uh, not only the functionality within the car, but also then the legal environment needs to be in place so that you also can check that all of the uh, various um, uh, functions uh, can be approved. I think the first step which we will see is um, that we have it in a kind of a clean room environment, which means highways, highways. so the highway pilot, where you have, to, where you have a, a kind of uh, ensured environment and you can predict certain use cases. And with that, we are targeting at with the next generation of the cars which came yeah, out it, in one or two years. Yeah, really interesting stuff, because of course, you know, it would be really simple if we had nothing but the Autobahn and nothing but autonomous vehicles. I'm, I'm sure you could have that running perfectly uh, today, but you know, number one, you start going on different roads, and number two, uh, you add that ever, you know, unpredictable human element when you have the cars that aren't uh, you know, on the same system, that can cause some issues there. I, I'm curious, anything, um, you know, from, from a European standpoint, 
you know, what's the partnership between government uh, and industry on that? And, you know, I guess anything else that's different about Europe than maybe what we'd see in North America? Yeah, I think the one of the biggest uh, differences here is as soon as authorities approve cars, then the liability goes to the authority. Uh, in uh, Americas, uh, there is a complete different behavior in that perspective. Uh, liability uh, is taken completely by the companies. And with that, of course, um, although there are authorities uh, to control a certain uh, environment, but the main uh, liability issue stays with the company itself. And this per, per se is a complete different approach for that. I think technology-wise, we are here and there uh, on uh, on the same level, ice uh, um, uh, on the same uh, technology level, and uh, as um, uh, um, as you can see already in today's driver assistance functions, technology-wise, we are not far ahead. You can already try certain of those functions um, for at least a couple of seconds. But uh, in order to really um, accept and uh, uh, calculate all the use cases, you need to start step by step. Uh, highway is uh, one of the perfect measures for that. But when you just go, um, I'm living here in the uh, in, in southern Germany. When you just go to an ancient city um, uh, uh, city center like we do have here in Nuremberg, it can be really really tricky that you uh, consider all the specific use cases. So uh, here we need to uh, optimize algorithms, the technology, uh, also the horsepower in terms of processing uh, load and of course accuracy of the sensors. So here is still for full autonomy. Uh, still a path to go. All right, so uh, Alex, you're part of the keynote uh, here at SUSE Con. Uh, obviously, you know, innovation uh, is, is a key topic as well as, you know, open source and community is, is, is a big uh, topic at the show overall. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, the, the partnership between Electrobit. Yeah, uh, thank you very much for this question. This is really an exciting thing. Uh, so two companies like uh, SUSE and uh, Electrobit, by the way, we have um, uh, we have been founded here both uh, very, very in uh, recent uh, um, uh, area, so uh, in Nuremberg area. So Luse, uh, SUSE is a, is, a, is a leader in delivering mission critical Linux and container technologies in several industries and Electrobit uh, brings in the automotive experience. And what we aim for is to really provide a future software platform for automobiles that fulfills all the key requirements around openness, about reuse, and uh, um, uh, also uh, uh, about a huge pool of um, open source um, um, uh, methodologies and new uh, modules so that we have a tremendous pool of uh, talents as well as a tremendous pool of innovation here. Uh, so this is the key uh, topic. Um, the automotive industry uh, as such is changing, changing in a way that you continue to develop the technologies along the life cycle of the car in order to really enable our customers to download new functions and new services during the life cycle of the car. This methodology is already used in several other industries. And uh, here we introduce with uh, this partnership exactly the basis for that uh, uh, in order to uh, really uh, prepare our customers to focus on their differentiating uh, technology and differentiating features. Yeah, fascinating thing. You know, you brought up, you know, the skill set, of course, is, is a key piece. Uh, any industry that's going through change, you wonder, you know, who can come along and who's ready for that. It sounded like you were saying uh, that, you know, Linux and the other technologies in the space uh, there is a large pool of tech uh, of knowledge out there, uh, and that can help uh, really kind of the growth of the next generation of the automotive industry. Am I getting that right? Yes, uh, I mean for sure the, the 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 development methodology in open source and embedded is completely different, specifically when it comes to liability. Um, so here, uh, there you need to comply to certain uh, standards, of course, but this is this is one topic. The other thing is that uh, really the uh, innovation pool, the innovation uh, span you have in open source, as well as the modules already existing and the best practices from other industries, this is a tremendous advantage. 
And um, uh, also one thing is uh, in terms of changing in our industry, in the automotive industry, the development methodology, um, excuse me, the reuse um, of uh, certain platforms is limited as soon as you uh, have uh, to jump to new uh, generations of uh, processes of uh, software modules and so on and so forth. Here we can, with the partnership, also leverage the experience to have uh, technologies which are also for a long period of time backward compatible and reusable in the essential uh, lower layers um, of uh, the software which you need to have by uh, uh, also complying to the uh, relevant standards for uh, performance as well as uh, safety requirements. Yeah, you know, really interesting mix of uh, balancing that you know, differentiation in the marketplace while uh, still being an upgradable path. Uh, uh, yes. I, I'm, I'm curious, you, you talked a little bit about the open source model. Uh, one of the key things when you talk about going through a, uh, you know, digital transformation is data. Um, there's obviously a lot of data if you talk about autonomous vehicles. Uh, you know, we see everybody about, you know, how many, you know, gigabytes per hour and, you know, all the maps and everything there. Uh, what is the role of data in this entire process? Is there sharing of data uh, between some of the different players involved? So yeah, data is, um, um, I would say data is one, is the, first of all, data is in general, independent from industry, the new currency. Uh, this is one thing uh, also realized in the automotive industry here. Uh, of course, we need to um, consider certain privacy uh, rules uh, independent from whether it's the car maker itself for his product or the driver. Um, uh, so we need to respect it. But independent from that, car is one of the most accurate sensors we do have um, in, in our environment. And of course, um, uh, creating data, we're we talking about one terabyte per day roundabout. And this is already now reused amongst uh, car manufacturers, amongst the industry, just think about a certain um, uh, uh, here as, a, as an acquisition of uh, several um, players in the industry where they are sharing map data uh, because it doesn't make a difference uh, for, a, for a, a GM car, for a Ford car, for a BMW car, for a Daimler car um, um, when you use the same road. The road stays, of course, the, the brand and the car changes, but the information about the road infrastructure is exactly the same. And this is the first topic which uh, has to be or will be shared and is already shared. Second thing is traffic uh, information where you have uh, mobile providers uh, in there. And this already is considered and there are a lot of discussion and uh, already business models undergoing or uh, in preparation for that. Yeah, well, you know, you hope the roads don't change. Uh, I live in the Boston area. There's <laughs> times if you take six months off and all of a sudden you're like, wait, this road used to go a certain way at least it's a lot easier to update uh, you know, your software uh, than it is for, for older vehicles that I'm driving. Um, you talked a little bit about privacy. Um, I know cybersecurity is uh, one of the aspects that, that Electrobit's involved. Uh, talk to us a little bit about uh, the security aspect and uh, your company's experiences there. Yeah, with uh, transferring data into the car or outside of the car, um, data security is a key feature. It's just a must. Um, so, uh, in former times, uh, as Electrobit, as uh, we are coming from inside the car, as an embedded uh, software provider, um, we protected really um, the, um, the devices within the car, for example, the odometer uh, from manipulation and uh, generated certain securities in the internal bus uh, with our customers. But this is not, no longer enough. You need to go outside the car, so um, when you transfer um, data from the cloud into the car or vice versa, and therefore cybersecurity uh, to protect the whole chain uh, in, inside the car communication there, all uh, interfaces where you can connect devices or the backend from where you transport uh, uh, the information. For that reason, reason Electrobit acquired a company uh, in Israel uh, two years ago, uh, but also we know that uh, um, in, the basics, uh, in the basic technology from the SUSE distribution, there's already a lot of uh, technology in there which makes data transfer really, really safe, uh, uh, sorry, secure, uh, so that you, that you uh, can trust uh, the data and really keep the privacy you need to have uh, for specific regions. 
All right. Well, th this is a very fast moving industry. Uh, give us a little bit as to what you see happening in the next 12 to 24 months. Uh, what, what are some of the kind of major uh, opportunities as well as challenges uh, that, that are being faced? Yeah, I think um, one of the biggest um, uh, opportunities we will see in the upcoming uh, directly next generation is the car really becoming uh, uh, part of the internet. I think with that, a lot of the um, a lot of the business models from the car manufacturer itself, from the uh, suppliers, need to change, uh, so that really um, the the uh, car manufacturer enable their customers to continuously update their uh, device, mobile device, uh, namely the car. It's very similar to those devices at the moment from technology which we do already have since a decade in our pocket. Uh, of course, you cannot put the car into your pocket, but you wanna uh, you wanna have the same convenience uh, with new services, with new functions. And I think this is the most of uh, the most and the uh, most exciting opportunity of the car. With that, you need to have new technologies on platform. You need to have um, uh, data security. You enable completely new business models. And uh, this will change our, our life completely, uh, also our business completely. And I think these are the most important uh, and the most exciting changes in the, in the near future as the next generation already uh, is under preparation and will be launched really, really, really soon. And of course, second topic is the autonomous uh, driving. It goes step by step, as just uh, uh, discussed in the beginning. And this is the second opportunity then for many other uh, companies uh, making business with the time when uh, the drivers then have quality time and can do something different than just steering the car. Excellent. Uh, so much excitement uh, in what is happening in the industry. Uh, definitely one we want to watch. Uh, Alex, want to give you the final word. Uh, SUSECON, uh, the partnership uh, between Electrobit and SUSE, and final takeaways that you have for the event. Yeah, thanks a lot. It's it's just exciting for us uh, to have such a great partner like Susan, experienced partner. It brings uh, lots of new aspects into our industry, helps us to to provide the, the right solutions. And with that, we are we are uh, sure that we can uh, generate and we will generate uh, the uh, basis of the next uh, smart cars of our customer in terms of software platform. Thank you very much. Alex, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I'm Stu Miniman, uh, lots more coverage here from SUSECon Digital 20. Thank you for watching theCUBE.